Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. Hello, hello, and welcome to Games oh, 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 Revisited. Hello, hello, and welcome to... Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, doggone it. I forgot I had unmuted Twitch. Um, or at least where the Twitch monitor is. To Season 4 of Games Revisited. Uh, for those of you who might be new to this show, new to the series... Um, games Revisited is a chance to look back at some of the classic games, some of the fun games of my youth that I wanted to enjoy, or games that came about around the same time that for one reason or another, uh, I wasn't able to play. So for like season one, we did Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, the good MMO, not the, or the good, um, uh, RPG, not the, uh, the MMO that started well, but, uh, went astray, shall we say. <laughs> and, uh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Season 2, we played through uh, Chrono Trigger. Season 3, we played through Portal and Portal 2. And now we're back to the console world with Illusions of Gaia. Illusions of Gaia was a game that came out in... Let me just double check, make sure I got my facts right. You know... Definitely fact check me. All right, came out in 1994 for the SNES. It was developed by Quinet and Enix published the game in Japan, and Nintendo published it worldwide. This is the second of a three-part series. The first one being Soul Blazer, which, uh, if you'll remember from my interludes back around Christmas time, uh, I did. Uh, I mentioned it. I mentioned it in passing. I don't. I don't remember if I actually did any gameplay. But Illusions of Gaia was one of the games that I did a quick little bit in the start just to get a show of the game. It's one of the ones that I've always had on my mind when I started this series. And so when when I was looking for a new game, I knew I wanted to shift back from the PC towards the console again. And it came down to Illusion of Gaia. Secret of Mana, which was published around the same time as Illusion of Gaia by Nintendo, and uh, a link to Zelda, a link to the past. Uh, there's a bajillion and two different playthroughs of Zelda, a link to the past. So while I may do that, that's not the most pressing one to me. Illusion of Gaia is one of those games that it feels like it got forgotten. Like, it was a really good game. It was a really fun game. Uh, it was very linear, even for its time. Because in the 90s, when, when we're talking about the, the system's limitations of the SNES, and I know I went through the different specs um, during the interludes, you know, just how little memory they had, uh, how little processing they had, even compared to the computers of the time. Like, you, you compare an Xbox to a gaming PC, and it's a different set of comparisons than a Nintendo, uh, or Super Nintendo, rather, and the gaming PCs of the day. Consider consider when we talked about Ultima 6. I played the SNES port of Ultima 6, not the computer version, and it's only in researching for the Games Revisited series that I found out that the, uh, the, the Nintendo edition had some serious limitations compared to the PC edition. Like, like uh, in the SNES edition, you get your starting character as he is. There, there's no customization. There's no choices. There's none of the traditional R RPG style, like pick your, pick your strength, your mana, etc., etc. Um, although, for Ultima, it was something a little bit different. It was more like you pick your virtues. And depending on which virtues you picked, that is what determined your starting strength, mana, endurance, etc., etc. Uh, but again, with Illusions of Gaia, we don't have that either. You get your starting character. There's no XP per kill. There's no leveling per se. You clear the dungeon, and then you get a fixed bonus at the end of that dungeon. So no matter how many times you play through, you're not going to build your character differently. You're not going to do things differently in that sense. Um, which is in some ways a little bit of a relief. Because if you remember, there was a lot of time on the Knights of the Old Republic series where we spent a considerable amount of an episode uh, going, okay, which which force power do I pick? Do I pick A or do I pick B? 
and what are the relative merits and uh, in particular with the chrono trigger when you look at where different tabs were being spent and what party composition you're going you know you look in the comments and there there's a couple of people that have some very strong opinions about what makes the best party what makes the best uh, setup and you're not really going to get that with this game because again it is pretty straightforward it's on the rails there's no side quest to get lost in which is probably good for me there's a reason why i haven't picked games like uh skyrim or <laughs> or or uh what was the elder scrolls game that came right before skyrim um ray Aston arcadius played it but i never did um help me out chat what, what, what was what was the one before uh Oblivion. Thank you. Oblivion. So, yeah, I, you know, if I were to do a game like Oblivion, I might get around to finishing the main quest sometime in the vicinity of 2023. Possibly. Maybe. I am notorious for getting distracted by side quests. Um, I've played many, many hours of Fallout 4. I have yet to complete the main storyline. Because I, I, I keep getting distracted. I, I, I get distracted a lot. It is only by accident that I finished the main quest on Skyrim in one of my many playthroughs. And I have spent many, many hours in Skyrim. Traveling hither and yon. Finding stuff... <laughs> For each time, finding something new that I did not find the last time, which is great in a game, but not so great in a show. So I'm probably going to stay away from those games, and that's one of the reasons, it's one of the things that came into the decision for uh, picking Illusion of Gaia. And, and I know you just saw that in frame. Um, I'm having a little bit of a skin problem here, and that's part of why I'm running late. Um, had to get my hands wrapped. <laughs> Sorry, I, I probably should have warned you guys before the weak stomachs, but I'm going to be fixing the headset because I kind of rushed to get everything up and up and going. Um, all right, so all that, that, that's really the briefest of brief introductions, and we're going to find what's going to feel like a lot of common JRPG, Japanese RPG tropes, you know, the young heroes, the funky hair. Uh, and a lot of a lot of the stuff that that we now know as endemic of them, <laughs> or some might more charitably say characteristic, um, and, and remember that this is much much earlier. This is one of the games that helped found those ideas. This was before Square and Enix merged, so you know th this is Enix by themselves when Square was a separate company. I've never felt so old uttering a phrase like that. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it was a definitely a fun game. There were some changes between the Japanese version and the U.S. version. The U.S. version, because Nintendo U.S. had some really weird policies about uh, what they would and wouldn't say. Like, there, there's a couple of places where characters contemplate God in or the nature of god in the japanese version but that was scrubbed from the u.s release somewhat ironically i would have thought because i really would have expected that to go the other way around um and likewise uh the characters we're gonna see them starting in a school in the original Japanese release, and I think even in the French release, I, I never saw quite clearly one way or the other if that was the case, but in the Japanese release, they start at a church. And so we're going to go talk to the teacher, and he's going to lead us in a poem, whereas in the original Japanese game, he led you in prayer. And, and I, that's one of those differences that I really found interesting and, and now, you know, I almost want to go back through all my childhood games and try to figure out, like, well, okay, what about, what about this one? What's different here? What changed there? Like, um, 
in, in some of the early Final Fantasy games, Biggs and Wedge were named something different. I have no idea why. There, there was an explanation, but it just, I don't, I don't get it. All right, so soon as, um, <laughs> but let's see if I can get this back to the title screen. Here, let me just, you know what, let me, let's go reset game, hit the reset button, and we'll switch over here to um, our more typical game view of things. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let the, the pre-game credits run through. So we're, we're going to sit here at the start screen for a little bit. Copyright 1994. Um, that, that is when it was released. That is not when I got it. I never got this game new. I never got a lot of games new. Um, where, where we lived was one of the states that did the uh, five cent refund on aluminum cans and plastic bottles. So you get a nickel refund for, for turning that stuff in. So... Uh, I would go to, to the break room where my stepfather worked and collect all the cans and bottles of soda and just wash them, store them, wash them, store them. When I had several trash bags full, we'd go into the place, turn them in, and hopefully there was enough money for a new game. And if there wasn't, keep saving up until there was. Uh, that is how I funded my habit early, early in my youth. All right, so here we are. The world was... The world was in an age of exploration. Looking for new lands, man uncovered the relics of ancient cultures. Gotta do the dramatic voice, because we're in an RPG. As time passed, many legends began to surface. A legend from each rune. A legend from each culture. Various relics were found in the runes. One of the legends told of strange statues in the shapes of spirits. What was a spirit to ancient people? The runes don't tell us. Or understand contrast. People who entered the ruins, searching for wealth, went in and were never seen again. Some said there were traps to protect the treasures. Others said it was a curse. No one thought these ruins would bring about disaster. Okay, and we're back to the beginning. Now, uh, before I get too much further uh, on the start of the game, I do want to point out a couple other things. Illusion of Gaia actually uses several real-world locations. Like, we're going to go to Egypt. We're going to go to the Tower of Babel. We're going to go to the Hanging Gardens. It, and based on the story of the game, you'll eventually, when we get to the end, understand why we're actually looking at some real-world places. Uh, obviously, some, uh, there's a lot of stuff that was made up for the game, too, uh, to include the very premise of the game. But uh, it is one of those things that it's kind of worth uh, keeping an eye on. Like, that, that last ruin that we looked at was the Tower of Babel. That is also going to be the last uh, the last area that we go to when we go there. So now that I've got five minutes for the episode, let's see what I can do in the starting starting town. So let's start our journey. We'll start Diary 1. Diary of a Madman. Oh, wait, no. That's the Ozzy Osbourne podcast. Um... <clears throat> All right, so is this arrangement okay? We do want stereo. A is attack and talk. B is cancel. Sell. Item palette. Y is not used. 
Alright, what are my options? B is attack. A is not used. Nah, I like this better. Alright, let's uh let's start our beginning. Start our beginning. Start our journey. <laughs> Begin our journey. It's cool. My name is Will. Oh, that's right. We start with narration. I'm the one on the far bottom left, with a flute slung to his black, black back. Ugh. Maybe I should have put something in the coffee. My name is Will. A year has passed since I went to the Tower of Babel with my father. My father and his party met with disaster because their group was GM'd by Arcadius. Sorry. Somehow, I made it back to South Cape. I still can't believe my father is gone. I'll never believe it. When I grow up, I'll be an explorer and see the world. Somewhere, I will meet my father. In this life or the next. Dun dun dun! Oh wait, no, sorry. That's all for today's lesson. You four do your best not to fall behind. Demons have appeared outside of town. If you go very far, you must go with your parents. Wait, what? Demons have appeared outside of town. So if you must go very far, you must go with your parents. What is my parent going to do against demons? Oh, wait, you're talking about the father who died? So what, I'm supposed to travel with the memory of my father if I go very far outside of town? Or should I borrow somebody else's parents to die for me? <clears throat> the things you notice. Also, no, knowing now what I know. <laughs> yeah. Tough luck. Yeah, exactly. Tough luck. Will had no parents. Exactly. Um, so, knowing what I know now, it is also one of those things that um, I, I can see the priestly garb now. I always wondered why the teacher was dressed kind of funny, but I figured, all right, yeah, teacher. But now that I know that this was originally intended to be a church, that makes a little bit more sense. That statue that's behind him was actually supposed to be a cross. Uh, but for for whatever reason, Nintendo America wanted that changed for the American release. Go figure. <clears throat> all right. I'm not sure I'm going to do 18 voices for these guys. So, you know, we'll just go. I'll see you guys at the usual place. I have to go home first. I'll see you guys there later. Also, I... <laughs> Die, Seth. What, what, did Seth ever, <laughs> what did Seth ever do to you? I take it you've played this game before. <laughs> I, I also do want, want to point out, too, that if you'll notice, everybody's got a unique color to their, their general character palette. And one of the nice things is that the text is colored uniquely to each character. So you can tell who's talking. Beyond just the name in front of, you know, Eric, I have to go home first. Um, he's also got a predominantly orange tint to him. All right. If you don't hurry home, your mother will think th will think that you were kept after school. <laughs> yeah. No, well, you know, I wouldn't go that far. Just because they have a unique color doesn't mean that they must be important. <laughs> what about you? Lance. Armstrong? Do you still have your medals? Oh, sorry. Wrong Lance. Uh, <laughs> this was long before that, Lance. Like always. Yeah, I'll, unfortunately, a lot of the NPCs serve no purpose beyond the occasional chat or two. Like always, the cave at the seashore. Oh, thank you for letting me know. Oh, Will, please recite with me. Remember, in the original Japanese release, this was going to be a prayer. Instead, we get this, because Nintendo North America. <clears throat> the world shines on brightly through eternity. Wait, that's it? thought I was getting more than that. Uh, Alright, which way, which way was out? Which way is the way I need to go? Was it this way? Anything in the barrel? Can, can I loot the uh, school? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that, that is kind of interesting, too, that the, uh, the priest's unique color is white. Hey, we're at South Cape. Um, 
All right, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, this is pretty much the, the generic text for anybody that's not your friend. That, that just happens to be a character in the game. Like, there's the kids, and then there's the old people of no importance. Uh, remember, that was one of the early JRPG tropes that kind of carried on throughout a great many of the games. Yeah, I know. That that I, I would have expected differently, too, but I, I guess it's kind of highlighting the difference between, you know, there's the important teenagers, and then there's all the old people. Uh, we'll see how the people who grew up with this game feel now that they are the old people. I should know. I am one. Hey, Will. How many times have I told you not to come up here? You have a habit of jumping down from places. Oh, really? Thank you for telling me about the game movement without bludgeoning me over <laughs> with it over my... <laughs> <clears throat> well, I guess I can't really stop you. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright, so now that we've been informed that we can jump off of things, let's uh, see what this mysterious door is. The... Oh, there's a dark space on top of the church school. Oh. In the dark space, you can record a travel journal. Stop there before you depart. Record what's happened so far? Sure, let's save game. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> th this is where I get to remind people who uh, did not know. You see, kids, back in the day, you couldn't just save willy-nilly wherever you felt like it. You had to go to these places called save points that were scattered throughout the game. If the game was nice, they gave you a lot of them. If the game was really mean, guess what? It means you had to be really good or get a lot of repetition. Yeah, no quick saves. <laughs> uh, you have no idea how much I, I reveled in joy when quick saves started to become a thing. And you could go, hmm, that cave. That cave looks like it might be trouble. Let's do a quick save. <laughs> I, I have grown quite spoiled by those, by the by. All right, so we're not supposed to do anything else there yet, but we're going to keep seeing those portals pop up throughout the game. That is where we go uh, to talk to that mysterious thing that we'll learn more about a little bit later. And that is also where we go to save the game. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. I don't, don't think I haven't forgotten about those either. You know, those horribly convoluted multi-letter character uppercase, lowercase hashes. Because that's pretty much what it is. It, it, it's a hash of uh, the game state that you're typing in to, to load where it is. Um, uh, we got our menu. We haven't picked up anything there yet. I am going <laughs> to... Yes, like Lost Vikings. Except Lost Vikings was nice. It was a, it was a four or five character code. That was all uppercase, so it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I'm thinking more of like Mega Man, especially like Mega Man Ten or X. <laughs> Forget the GIF GIF debate. Is it Mega Man Ten or is it Mega Man X? <laughs> uh, I I don't have all the passwords that I used to write down. I used to keep them in a paper notebook. Um, I I did find. I was helping my parents move, and I found a couple of things like this. Uh, if you were there for the Chrono Trigger Let's Play, you'll know that I, I used that. Yeah, Simon's Quest. Simon's Quest was a little interesting too. And uh, yeah, th there were there were a few others that had some stupidly horrible codes. Like when Zelda Two: A Link to the Past just had a uh, a little battery in the cartridge that you, let you save the game state. That was that was so wonderful until the battery died, and then you kept losing your game save. Yes, I'm looking at that first cartridge that I bought. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're about 20, 24 minutes in, and this is where I want to point out... Oh, yes, Simon's Quest did have the funky font. I almost forgot about that. Maybe that's just me trying to blot out the memory of that, that horror show. Um, so here's... Here's where I actually end up, uh, if I can find the right... There we go. 
All right, so for those new to the Games Revisited stream, what I do every Thursday is Games Revisited is when you're watching live, you're watching the live recording of the next six episodes. So every 20 or so minutes in, I'm going to do a quick outro, break, intro, and then keep playing. So if you're watching live, hang tight, because I am going to do about two, two and a half hours worth of content. Uh, but when I upload it to YouTube... I'm actually going to uh, just do the, the first 20, 25 minutes bit as an episode that'll show up tomorrow. And then the next 25 minute bit that'll show up as an episode the day after that. And the next 25 minute bit that'll show up the day after that and all that. So if you're watching live, hang tight. I'm not actually calling it a day, but this is where for the people who watch the YouTube recording later, I want to say thank you for joining along so far. If you want to watch live, I stream Thursdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. There's a link in the description below. And if you haven't already, follow so you get notified when I go live. Because, again, I've got a regular schedule of Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Tuesdays, I do Coffee Craft, a Let's Play Minecraft server. And Thursdays, I do Games Revisited, a look at a classic game. And this series, we're going through Illusion of Gaia. And if you haven't already, go over to the YouTube channel as well and follow along there. That way you'll get notified when new episodes get released. And you'll also see some of the other content that goes up. Like uh, we all the Games Revisited live streams go up there as well as these episodes. I've also released a new uh, Villager voice mod for... Uh, Minecraft. So if you like playing around with resource packs and that sort of thing in Minecraft, I've got a new one up there. And, and it's kind of wild watching how that's blown up. Um, and all that good fun stuff. And also, if you if you like what you're seeing, if you want to help the channel out, yeah, this is strictly value for value. You can also head over to live.anonjunior.com. That'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can give a little tip or donation, whichever way you want to think about it, whichever way. Yeah, again, this is value for value. So only if you're getting value out of the content that you're receiving here, consider giving a little value back, even if it's just enough to, you know, keep me in coffee. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate a cup of coffee every now and again. I'm going to try to get a couple other ways to... to uh, Accept donations and that sort of thing up in the very near future. I might work on that this weekend while I'm home um, recovering. <laughs> and uh, so live folks, give me just a minute to prepare the next episode. So I I'm going to hit the blank screen, wait eight seconds, because that's where the the live thingies go on the YouTube video. And then uh, and then I'll be right back to con continue on the other five episodes I got planned for tonight. So live folks, give me a minute. YouTube folks, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>